Um, not sure if I'm all the way live yet, but you know what? I am stepping outside of my box today. Amy from Key Delicious Life. I'm a mess. This is, this is the everyday mess. I woke up with a migraine. But today, I have to start making Thanksgiving stuff. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go live. If anyone's out there and you want to watch and you want to see what I'm making, join. And I'm so nervous, you guys. I'm so nervous. Lives, for some reason, freak me out so much. So um, I just thought, you know, I'm going to step outside of my box. I'm going to try to conquer my fear. My, look at my messy bun. This is, I have so much hair. I have to force it all up on my head. Hi! Hi, how are you? <laughs> hey, I'm just stepping outside of my box. I I am terrible with doing lives. Let me know. Is it shaky? Is it um, choppy because of the... Um, my internet's really slow? Let me know. I might have to fix my internet. And Hello, everybody! <laughs> So listen, I am going to make pumpkin pie, and I didn't plan on talking a lot. I just thought if you guys are bored today, if you are lonely, if you are curious what I'm up to, I know, don't be nervous. <laughs> um, no buffering? Oh, that's good. Thank you, Johnny. Yeah, so I'm just going to cook today and bake. You guys are welcome to check in while I'm doing this, and we'll see how long this live goes. I'm going to be making a um, sugar-free pumpkin pie um, with an almond crust, and then I plan on also making one with a just my own pecan, sweet pecan crust. So I got to get started. I'm going to get baking. So I'm going to do this recipe is from wholesomeyum.com. Check them out. This is their low-carb almond flour crust, and then I'm also doing their low carb pumpkin pie. So this, I think it was four mm -hmm. net grams per slice. Um, I think that includes the pie crust. Yeah, so um, anyway, um, give this live a thumbs up for me and um, let me know what you're making. Are you guys baking today? Are you getting ready for tomorrow? How's it going in your house? Okay, so. On the pie crust, I'm going to start with the pie crust. It says preheat the oven to 350 degrees. So I'm going to go do that. I'll be right back. Okay. Now, this says line your pie pan with parchment paper or grease well. So I'm just gonna grease, grease it well. I'll probably use butter for that. What do you guys think? Butter or, I don't know. I'm gonna use butter. Now I know my sister's at home baking today, so she's probably, I should have told her I was going live. <laughs> But I get so nervous and I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. If I don't do things, I won't ever do it, you know. So let's get some butter in here. But yeah, you guys, don't feel like you need to stay and watch if you have things to do. This is just me doing something outside of the box and, you know, just trying to conquer my fear. I don't know why, but lives freak me out. Even when other people are doing a live... I have a, I like have such social anxiety that I won't even go on in their live if they're live because I kind of just freak out a little bit about all the chat and, and them seeing me and then, I don't know, I'm weird that way. So I got to conquer that. It's ridiculous. So I'm going to grease my pie plate. Alrighty. I probably put too much. Okay, my butter was nice and soft because I had left that out. Okay, so in a large bowl, we're going to mix together our almond flour and erythritol. So for almond flour, I'm using super fine almond flour. So this was a gift to me from Glitterbug072 in the mystery boxes that we do. So if you're curious about those, check out my past videos. 
So this is super fine almond flour, which is really nice. Personally, I don't like the, the coarse almond flour. I feel like it's a little too coarse and I want mine to be a little more like, as much like traditional pie crust as possible. So I have, I love that this is super fine. And you could always run yours through a food processor. If you wanna make it finer, you could do that too. All right, so this calls for two and a half cups of almond flour. Let's see if I can find a cup. Yeah, so much for being ready. I'm gonna be right back and grab a measuring cup. Okay, so we want two and a half cups. Fill this up. And I am going to get out all those lumps as well. Here's a half. Okay, so we're just going to get out these little lumps. The less lumps, the better. What's everyone making today? I might have missed that if you said that already on the chat. I think my chat disappeared. Okay, get the lumps out of the almond flour. Let me see if my chat will come back. There's chat. Too bad it disappears on you. It should just stay there, right? All messages visible. There we go. Oh, thank you, Johnny. <laughs> You're so kind. You know, I'm a little guy. I, I, it's okay. I'm okay with just a couple people watching. That, that makes me less nervous. <laughs> okay, so I got all the lumps out. And now it says we're going to mix in our erythritol. And I do have monk fruit. So I'm going to be using monk fruit. Um, now with monk fruit or even erythritol or any of your sweeteners, if it's a granulated sweetener, you might want to run it through. Um, I have a bullet or a food processor just to make it finer only because sometimes you can get the grittiness. If it doesn't bake out or dissolve, you might get a little grittiness. So I'm going to try to run mine through the bullet and get it to be a little bit softer and finer. Let me, let me grab that. So I have monk fruit golden and I do have erythritol as well. Let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and run this through. I'm going to try the golden. The golden's a little bit more like brown sugar, which I like. So let me grab my bullet. Sorry, I'm not totally ready. actually have two bullets you guys that's how much I like my bullets they're really nice one of them tends if these little things break on your bullet if you ever notice these little tabs it won't work so that's not a good cut Okay, so I also wanted to show you guys, my sister didn't know this and I thought I'd show it. Um, the bullets come with two different attachments. This one is for uh, milling nuts or you know just doing stuff into a fine powder. This is your normal, your normal blending one for smoothies and all that kind of stuff. So if you have this, it does a better job, but you could probably still use this too. All right, get rid of the broken one. Okay, so this calls for a third of a cup of erythritol. Now, I did look up uh, monk fruit is a little bit sweeter than erythritol. So just sort of, you know, 
adjust it to your taste. But some of it does bake out in, in your baking. It does bake out a little bit, so you might notice that. Okay, so I'm going to put this in. It might be loud. I apologize for the loudness. I'm actually doing the whole third. It might be a little too sweet, but we'll see. I'm winging it. <laughs> okay. Wow, you see how fast that powdered? It's just like powder. So... That's just going to make it a lot more fine consistency. See all that? <laughs> all the dust. Okay, got that in. It smells like brown sugar, too. That's why I love this one. It's really good stuff. Okay, and sea salt. We're going to put a quarter of a teaspoon of sea salt. I had it here. quarter of a teaspoon little teeny little teeny bit okay it's going to get interesting isn't it as I try to roll this pie crust out okay we're going to stir in this calls for melted ghee and I'm not a really big I have some melt some ghee but I don't really care for the taste of ghee so I'm just using butter so I'm going to melt some butter and I'm going to do my egg and we're going to get that going. So one large egg and a quarter cup of butter is what I'm going to be using. So um, let's see, I got to get, I'll probably use this for my egg. I'll be right back. Okay, so there's my egg. I have fresh eggs from my chickens. And we're gonna do some butter. Quarter of a cup of butter. Let's see. That's four of these little pats, and I used one, so we're gonna do it to there. I think, if I remember right, this recipe, she d blends this all up in her food processor. I could be wrong. That might have been a different recipe. But I'm going to go melt my butter, so be right back. I should call my sister on my life. <laughs> That'd be funny. It's raining here in California. So we're going to have rain today and I think for tomorrow. So kind of nice. I've been missing the rain. I like, I love rain. Okay, so my, my butter. Did that way too hot so we're gonna let that cool off it's like boiling so it says stir in the melted ghee and egg until well combined and then if using vanilla stir that into the melted ghee before you add to the dry ingredients the dough will be dry and crumbly just keep mixing pressing and stirring until it's uniform and there is no almond flour powder left Alternatively, this is what I was thinking, you can use a food processor to mix it all together. I think I'll do that because it's right there, nice and handy. It's going to be exciting. Let's get my egg in here. Oh, 
Let me grab a different egg. This one's not good. Every once in a while you get bad eggs when you have your own chickens. Got a good egg. Usually they're fine. I'm just really picky with my eggs. If they're not like, feel like they're 100% fresh, I just toss them in a fresher one. <laughs> so anyway, fresh eggs are the best though. I don't put that hot butter in there because it's still hot and it'll cook my egg. So we're going to mix in, it said to mix the vanilla in, so we're going to do a half a teaspoon of vanilla into our egg mixture. I always go a little over. Vanilla is good stuff. Mix that in. Okay. Throw this in the refrigerator or something. I just don't want it to cook. Stir in the melted ghee and egg until well combined. If using vanilla, stir that in. We did that. So let's get the food processor ready. My food processor has the shortest cord in the world, like super short. Okay. Good, my blade is in, should be good to go. We're gonna get this flour in here. Seems like a lot. Alrighty. I'm gonna go throw this in the fridge to cool it off. Be right back. So my butter is cooling off in the refrigerator. I'm having a LaCroix. I feel so dehydrated lately. So I'm going to try to... Hi, the lifting dermatologist. How are you? So good to have you join. I'm just making a pumpkin pie today. Just thought I'd do that live. Sounds good, right? <laughs> I'm having a LaCroix. So... I'm trying to get my fluids up. Water, mineral water, get the fluids in. Okay, so I'm letting my butter cool off and then I'm going to mix up all my pie crust in here. So that should be soon. And once you get it all mixed, you're really, all you're doing, it's. A lot of people stress out about making pie crusts because they think they have to roll them out and then they get stuck to the thing or they get they start tearing when you try to lift it. Honestly, with this pie crust, all you have to do is press it in. So you're just pressing it in manually, which kind of a no-fail deal, right? I like that. Okay, let's go get our butter.
I'm going to whisk it in super slow so it doesn't mess up my eggs. That's all I need, that disaster. But I just wanted to thank you all too for all of the follows and the likes and all your comments on my journey, my weight loss journey. You guys have been so fabulous and so wonderful. And I want to wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving too. So here we go. Let's get this in there. Okay. It says just stir it in. I'm a little bit nervous. It doesn't seem like enough liquid to me. See the cord? This is the design. The cord is here, but you want to have it kind of like this. It's so annoying. But you have to have these on. All right, let's do it. Press it in. See, it's kind of, it's very pressable, very dough-like. So, it seems like it, I wonder if this makes two. I don't like my pie crust very thick, especially um, the almond flour pie crust, so... I'm going to just put in half and see if I can make that work because it's, I don't like it to be too thick. To me, it, it's overpowering if it's too thick. All right. So yeah, this is working. If I can do this, you guys can do it. So I'm just pressing this pie crust in and it's going really well. So if you guys are looking for a pie crust for your keto pumpkin pie, check out the one from wholesomeyum.com. Check them out. Very easy to follow recipes. This probably takes the longest, just pressing this all in. You, you can use your knuckles <laughs> or your fingertips. I find getting into the corner of the pipe plate, you kind of have to vary your pressure. But yeah, I don't like my pie crust real thick on the almond flour crust because I do feel like it overpowers sometimes. And I'm just going to give mine a little fluted edge. I also have found that when you bake these, they tend to get brown really fast. So, um, you know, just keep your eye on it. And if you want, you can cover the edges with tin foil and protect it from getting too over brown. I usually do that. You hear the little chirping in the background, that is our new cockatiel. His name is Meep, and he... Hi, Nona Grace! So good to see you! Welcome home from work. <laughs> I decided to step out of my box and just go live and try not to be so fearful of lives. Um, I'm making a pumpkin pie. Pretty brave, right? <laughs> to do it live. If I mess up, I mess up. Oh well, I'm not worried. So I am making, this is from wholesomeyum.com in case you are looking for a pumpkin pie recipe. And I got the crust all in here, so that's my, my other bigger bird. Okay guys, 
this is looking pretty good. And like I said, I have that much crust left. Probably depends on the size of your pie plate too. How big, you know, how much crust you're going to need. But I just feel that less is more on this particular type of crust. Sorry about that. <laughs> Yes, Nona Grace, thank you. And I, I woke up with a migraine. I've, I've been battling migraines this, I think for California in general, like we've had so many wildfires here that the smoke and the air quality is awful. So I think that's part of my problem. They're sinus triggered migraines. Okay, so my crust is as good as I think I'm gonna get it. So we're gonna set that aside. Let's see, what does it tell me to do? Okay, it says, poke holes in the surface to, pre to prevent bubbling. So we'll get that going. Just so as you're baking, it won't bubble up. This is, you do this with a traditional pie crust too. Okay, and then we are going to bake this for 10 to 12 minutes. So I'm going to go put this in and I'll be right back. I set a timer for 10 minutes on the pie crust. Okay, let's check. It keeps hiding my messages. Oh yeah, I try to follow everyone on Twitter that I see. If you pop up, I try to follow you. Anyone that's keto, you're my kind of people. So <laughs> um, yeah, I have a Twitter, I have an Instagram, um, I just, oh, I just opened a Pinterest board, so I'm going to start trying to update that. So in case you're interested, look me up on Pinterest, Ketolicious Life. I think I have a link below, too. But I'm just trying to stay up with all the social media. It's crazy. Okay, so now we're going to get started on the filling, the good stuff. And this is also from Wholesome Yum. Uh, Nona Grace, I am making a low-carb, sugar-free pumpkin pie, pumpkin pie. So I'm using the recipe from wholesomeyum.com. So I think I made this one last year. I'm not totally sure. I can't remember which one I made, but it looked the best to me. It had all the ingredients I had, and it looked super easy to follow. So, so yeah, so we're going to get started. Let's see. I get the right one here. You know what I did? Wow, that's smart. Somehow I accidentally printed out uh, two, two pumpkin pie crust recipes. So I'm going to have to disappear for a second and go print out the actual pumpkin pie recipe. I am so sorry. <laughs> Bear with me. I'll be right back. Hey guys, I don't know if my mom's live, but hi. I'm pretty sure she's live, and I want to show you guys Meep. Say hi, Meep. Yeah, pretty birdie. <laughs> He's so cute. Anyway, so 
Yeah, this is Meep, one of our birds. He's really cute. He can say pretty birdie. Yeah, pretty pretty bird. He can say a lot of things. So, yeah, I just want to show you guys Meep. Hi, I'm back. I told Ava, hurry, go share with buddy Meep. <laughs> so that's our cockatiel. All right, so I got the pumpkin pie recipe. Let me put my messages back on. Gosh, that's annoying. Okay, so what we're gonna do, why is this doing this? Oh my gosh. It's not printing out my, my, my recipe. It did it, no, here it is. I guess it's just the way it reads is a little fun, funny. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree. So this is a 29 ounce can. So just be aware of that. If you're using this canned pumpkin, half, this is half. So I'm going to get my other bowl. I love the clear bowls because it kind of lets you guys see what's going on. Get my can opener over here. I'm running out of counter space already. Bear with me while I open this can, guys. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do half of this. going to eyeball it. Probably a little tiny bit more than half is what I ended up doing. Okay. A half a cup of heavy cream. Oh wow, I had exactly a half a cup left. I have more heavy cream in the fridge, but I wanted to finish this one off. Okay, half a cup of heavy cream, two large eggs. Okay, I'll be right back with the eggs. I'm going to mix these up in here, a little bit of that heavy cream that's already in there. Okay. At least this way, if you make your pumpkin pie early, if you do have a fail, if it doesn't turn out, you can always start over. Give yourself a little bump, buffer time, you know. Okay, so two-thirds cup of powdered erythritol, and I am using monk fruit golden. Um, monk fruit golden does have more of a brown sugar taste, so if you don't want that flavor in your pie, you might opt to use the white one. Just depends. I'm going to try. I just try different things. It really, it has a molasses smell. Oh, yay, thank you. Uh, that's what I was hoping. I figured maybe other people are baking too and we can kind of just bake together. Well, how are you making your dressing? I bet that's gonna be awesome. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and powder this again like we had done earlier. So I am doing two thirds of a cup. So I need one more. Bear with me on the noise again. Oh, 
my bullet's a little stuck. It doesn't push down. So I have to force it. But it powders up so fast, you guys. It just takes a second. So anytime you use a recipe that says powdered this, powdered that, that's all you have to do. It smells so good. Sprinkle that in. Okay, let's see. Two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. Tried and true, that's what I've always used good stuff. I actually, a lot of times, I'll even just put extra. Like, I'll mix this up and then kind of smell it and tell, and I'll gauge if it, if I think it needs a little more. So we've got a quarter teaspoon of uh, sea salt again. Quarter teaspoon. We got the big Mac Daddy pink Himalayan salt from Costco. So we're stocked. <laughs> Teaspoon of vanilla extract. And this is one where I like to cheat and I always put extra. So I'm going to definitely do two. Oops, clinking around here. I love the vanilla extract. I feel like you cannot go wrong with vanilla extract. Okay, and this recipe did call for blackstrap molasses, which I don't have. So I had molasses in the cupboard from my pre-keto days when I used to make gingerbread. Well, it has a lot of carbs in it, so I won't be using that. Okay, I'll be right back. That's the pie crust. Here's our pie crust, guys. See how the edges are just barely lightly brown? Mm. Smells wonderful. So we're gonna set this over here to cool. And I'll be right back. Okay, so now we've got everything in here. We're gonna beat this all together. We're gonna cool the crust for about 10 minutes. Longer, it says longer if you have the time. Um, and then we're gonna pour this filling in. Then we're gonna bake it for 40 to 50 minutes and that's it. So I've been live streaming for 38 minutes and talking. So it's taken me that long to get this pie almost from start to, not start to finish, but from start to in the oven. So we're gonna mix this up. And I'm using this hand mixer. I love this thing. This is a Kizen Art. Comes with different attachments, but I love it for the for this. It's just so awesome. Put it on, always start on low <laughs> and kind of give it a little. Like that. <laughs> oh, so Nona Grace is making her dressing. Nine pounds of meat, two ground turkey. Oh, my chat went away. Oh, wow. That sounds amazing. Beef, onion, celery, cauliflower, broccoli. Yum. Oh, yeah. I like it hot, too. I might have to try your recipe. Maybe if you could uh, send me a recipe or maybe you should do a video on it. <laughs> Awesome. Hi, optimistically cynical. I took my son to the park and when we got home, we found his goldfish dead, which is a hard situation for any first time parent. How do you explain autoerotic asphyxiation? I can't even say that. Asphyxiation to a four year old. Oh, I am so sorry. Um, gosh. That kind of hits home a little. I've recently lost a pet and it's it's hard to talk about. I can't I still can't even talk about it. 
But uh, my heart goes out to you, and I know as a mom, you're gonna do you're gonna do what's right for your son, and you know just let the emotions happen. I think that's the most important is don't don't try to cover stuff up, don't try to hide stuff, you know, let it be raw and and let it happen, you know. Oh, you're saying it's a joke? Okay, well. We're not joking now. I'm gonna get back to making my pie. Okay, it's my first lot. Well, no, it's my second life. And I think it's turning out pretty well, don't you guys think? Even when you have trolls show up, that's a good thing. So, thank you. Okay, you guys, check this out. How's it look? It smells really good. And you know what? I'm going to add more pumpkin pie spice. Like I said, we like ours pretty spicy. Spicy. My chat always goes away. So pretty annoying. I got you all. Okay. So now we're going to get our pie crust going here. Now this pie crust is still hot. So it said if you have time, let it cool for 10 minutes. I don't know if we need to let it cool for 10 minutes. Do we? Tell me down below. Do I let it cool or do I go for it? Nona Grace, how is your stuffing going how long does it take you to make it it sounds really really good okay sorry if i'm wiggling the the chat there we go I'm trying to get it to come back up i i wonder if there's a way to just keep your chat on your screen. That would kind of make sense, wouldn't it? All right, I'm gonna get another pot holder. Okay. It's still pretty hot, so we're gonna let it cool. Oh, you have to brown all the meat, yeah. That takes a little bit of time probably. Do you have to do it all in one pan or do you just do it in separate separate pans? St steam the broccoli and the cauliflower, yep. Right, yeah. Keto cooking is no joke. <laughs> if you're not good at cooking, you'll get good. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going It's fun too. So I'm gonna see if I can get my sister on the phone and tell her to join my live, my live. I'm making pumpkin pie. So let's call my sister, Julie. My sister, Julie, has been doing keto. She started about two months after I did. She saw my progress on keto and she was so excited for me and blown away that she jumped right in and started keto. So let's call her and, and see what she's doing. See if she answered. While my crust is cooling off. Hello? Hey sis, what are you doing? Hi. 
You're on, you're live on YouTube with me right now. <laughs> Say hi. I'm glad you can't see me. This is my sister, Julie, everyone. Julie, I am doing a live on YouTube. I'm making pumpkin pie. So come and watch. Oh, yummy. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll let you go. Okay, we'll see you later. Right, bye. bye. She's going to kill me later. All right, so that's my sister. She's awesome. She's been amazing support for me. She's along with all of you. You guys are such great support, you know. Having the support system when you're doing a diet is, I think, a huge percentage. I mean, you put in a lot of the work and the effort, but without that backing, without that team behind you and, and people doing it with you even, just you know, in the trenches with you, it's hard, it's really hard. Food is such a big part of our lives. So yeah, it's very hard. Okay, All right, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's still warm, but I think we're gonna go for it. Where's my... Um, I lost my scraper. I have a little Merry Christmas scraper. It's little though. Okay, let's try that. So we're gonna add our pumpkin pie into our crust. In she goes. Smells really good. You know, I think I'm gonna taste it too. Taste really, it doesn't taste as pumpkin-y as I remember. I don't know why. It's sweet, it tastes sweet. But like I said, this is kind of like the experimental for me. And if there's something I don't like about this recipe, I can always switch it up. So we're going to spread that around. It looks really good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this pie into the oven for 40 minutes and let her bake. So here we go. I'll be right back. How, how does it look so far, guys? Looks good, hopefully. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I set my timer for 40 minutes. I set it for the lower time. That way I can check everyone's ovens cooks a little differently. So if your oven cooks hotter, you don't want it to get done. What I was reading about pumpkin pie is that it's a custard pie. So you don't want to over bake it. You want it to be a little jiggly when you bring it out of the oven. Um, I always stick a knife in and if you know, just a little bit of batter comes out, then it's probably done. So if you cook it, if you overcook it, that's how pumpkin pie will crack because as it's cooling, you know, the, the outside is done faster than the inside so it can start cracking. So you don't wanna overcook. And even when you take it out, it's gonna still continue baking and cooking for a little bit. So anyway, <laughs> my bird. So we're going to let that bake for 40 minutes and I'll probably come back on maybe and show you guys. But I think, I think for now I'm going to probably end the live stream and show you guys the finished product when it's done. Um, 
Now this does say if you see the crust start to get too brown in the middle of your baking, um, cover it with the edges with foil um, and then put it back in. So that is that is what I've always done too in pie baking. Um, and it's kind of hard to get it on there. It's better, it's, it's, uh, it's probably better just to do it right off the bat. Like as soon as you're put, before you put the pie in, just go ahead and put some foil just around. Um, cause then if you're trying to take it out while it's hot and put the foil on, it's usually hard. Um, yeah. So then cool it completely on the counter, refrigerate at least an hour before slicing and it can be refrigerated overnight. So there you have it. I hope you guys had fun walk baking with me and, um, I might come on and do another live baking today. We'll see. I got to get this mess all cleaned up and yeah, we'll go from there. So thanks so much. You guys helped me get over my fear a little bit. It's, it's nice to be able to go live and not be so nervous because I've been wanting, I mean, I've been on YouTube for a year now and I've only done one live and they just scare me. So anyway, thank you so much, Nona Grace, too, for stopping by. I'm, I'm excited to hear more about your dressing, too. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. Now I got to figure out how to turn you off. Let's see. What do you do? Click the X. Let's see. No. Okay. I'm going to say bye, and hopefully if this works, I'll be leaving. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everyone.